James Longstreet was a United States Army officer, government official, and most notably a Confederate Army Lieutenant General during the American Civil War from 1861 to 1865. Longstreet, one of Robert E. Lee's most trusted subordinates, played a critical role in Confederate operations in both the Eastern and Western theaters of the war. Longstreet, nicknamed Lee's War Horse, first distinguished himself in early Confederate victories at the battles of First and Second Bull Run before mounting two successful defensive stands at the battles of Antietam and Fredericksburg in 1862. Longstreet was a controversial figure in the Confederate defeat at Gettysburg in 1863 when he reluctantly oversaw Pickett's charge, a doomed offensive that resulted in a Confederate loss and the high water mark of the Confederacy. Longstreet played a crucial role in the Confederate victory at the Battle of Chickamauga and he was seriously wounded during the Battle of the Wilderness in 1864. After the war, um, according to uh, Piston on page 95, Longstreet became a cotton factor in partnership with a wartime friend, William Miller Owen of the Washington Artillery and Owen's brother, Edward. Within two years, he was a successful businessman and respected figure in financial circles. He became president of the board of an insurance firm and took an interest in large-scale railroad investments, end quote. Um, the following quote comes from uh, Hogue, page 158. Longstreet's business fortunes rose in contrast to those of many Confederates who became impoverished or struggled to make a living in the wake of the war. In 1867, Longstreet wrote a highly publicized series of controversial letters reprinted in the New Orleans Times as Congress and the country debated the terms of the Military Reconstruction Act that would govern the readmission of ex-Confederate states into the Union. He argued that the Confederacy had lost the war by what he called, quote, the hazards of revolution and would have to accept the outcomes of that revolution, end quote. Longstreet's criticism of Lee's tactics <coughs> and his support uh, for Lincoln's Republican Party, notably Ulysses S. Grant's 1868 presidential campaign, led to repeated attacks on his character in the South. His political stance, acceptance of Reconstruction, and criticism of Lee contributed to his successful businesses failing from the loss of Southern Democratic support. Still, they led to economic security through appointments to government positions by the Republican administrations that dominated the postbellum period. According to William L. Richter's research, quote, Longstreet does not seem to have profited from being a radical. Because of his cotton business after the war, he was never in poor financial condition like so many others. His political views, however, caused his business to fail and forced the general to live solely off the meager salary of his Republican office. End quote. That's Richter, page 230. General Longstreet's second wife and widow, Helen D. Longstreet, argued that, quote, After the fall of the curtain at Appomattox, General Longstreet went to New Orleans and engaged in the cotton and insurance business. He developed in business the splendid ability that marked him as a soldier. He was making $10,000 a year at the time. The celebrated difference of opinion came up as to the course the South should pursue in the rehabilitation of the war-wasted land. It was then that he wrote the famous political letter of 1867 that turned the South against him and made it practically impossible for, for him to do business in that section of the country. The idea that this letter was written to secure political preferment from the powers and authority is perfectly absurd. He was making more in business and would have made still more and more as the years went on than he could make then or even afterwards in politics. Um, that, end quote. That's from Helen Longstreet's um, book on page 113. General Longstreet himself addressed the controversy following his letter in his memoirs. Quote, Up to that time, the First Corps, in all of its parts, in all of its history, was above reproach. I was in successful business in New Orleans as cotton factor with a salary from an insurance company of $5,000 per year. The day after the announcement, old comrades passed me on the streets without speaking. Business began to grow dull. General Hood, the only one of my old comrades who occasionally visited me, thought that he could save the insurance business, and in a few weeks, I found myself at leisure. And that's, end quote, that's from James Longstreet's memoir, page 637. Based on General Longstreet and his widow's estimates of his yearly salary, he was making between $90,000 and $180,000 in uh, today's uh, money. His reputation in the South suffered even more damage when, in 1874, he led African-American militia 
against the Anti-Reconstruction uh, White League at the Battle of Liberty Place. Before his death in 1904, Longstreet served as the United States Ambassador to Turkey and as Railroad Commissioner. Thank you.